Good evening. Thank you for joining us at Noon Baptist Church. My name is Bo, and I'm so grateful to have you with us this evening. Now, if you've not already done so, go ahead and like us there on Facebook, and that way you can see everything that's coming up from the church. As we're getting started, we'd love to hear from you in the comments. Say hi, tell a joke, let us know where you're watching from. We are so excited to have you with us this evening. As Pastor Tony is going to be going to the second message in our series on Barnabas, the Encourager, tonight we're going to be talking about how to be an encourager by being a friend. Now here's Pastor Tony. Good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday evening service at Newton Baptist Church. And I know you're looking around going, wait a minute, this is not Newton Baptist Church. Well, this is Newton Baptist Mobile. Uh, we're in Turner Lake today, filming for our Wednesday evening service. And I am so grateful, glad, delighted that you have joined us. Uh, we're studying my favorite Bible character outside of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And his name is Barnabas. And last week we noticed Barnabas was an encouragement through his giving. And uh, so many people um, at Newton and I know other churches and listening by way of live stream, such an encouragement through their giving. And today we go to Acts chapter 9 and we see Barnabas being an encouragement through friendship. And in Acts chapter 9, you know the story well, there was a guy named Saul. Um, his name was changed to Paul. And Saul uh, uh, was mean. Uh, he was uh, an enemy of the church. He was against Jesus Christ. And in Acts chapter 9, we see Saul's conversion to Paul. And you know that he was blind for three days and Ananias comes and lays hands on him. And then Paul starts preaching and he starts confounding and just confusing all of the religious leaders. They're like, wait a minute, isn't this the very one that was sent here to prosecute and to imprison those that went by the name of Christ? And now all of a sudden Paul, uh, Saul is preaching Christ and just making havoc of the synagogue. Man, he is just leveling them. Because remember, Paul was a very intelligent man, very well studied. Uh, highly educated, uh, very fluent in the law. And so all of a sudden this guy comes on the scene and the church is like, this is our enemy. But now all of a sudden he's lifting up the same Christ that we lift up. Now the religious leaders got so mad at Saul, Paul, I'm going to start using Paul for the sake of the rest of the message. They got so mad at Paul that uh, they wanted to kill him and they sought how they might kill him. And we come to verse 24 of Acts chapter 9 and I'll read those verses. If you have your Bible, can I invite you to open them up and to follow along with me? Acts chapter 9, beginning in verse 24. But they're lying awake. Now, they were plotting to kill Paul. Remember that, okay? But their lying awake was known of Saul or Paul, and they watched the gates day and night to kill him. I mean, it leaves little doubt to what they were looking to do. Then the disciples took him by night and let him, this is Paul, let him down by the wall in a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, okay, he essayed or desired to join himself to the disciples. He's like, hey, I want to be part of you guys. But they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. And then verse 27, I love the first two words. It says, but Barnabas. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he, Paul, had seen the Lord in the way and how he had spoken of to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out there at Jerusalem. And so when we're first introduced to Paul and Barnabas, uh, Paul, they didn't want to be around him. Again, here it uses his name Saul. They didn't want to be around him. They, they, they were scared of him. They were skeptical. There were so many things going on in their life. But all of a sudden, here's this man that comes in on the scene to vouch for him. Has anybody ever had your back? Have you ever really had a true friend? Do, do people know what it means to be a friend? Um, would anybody consider you or myself to be a, a true close friend? Proverbs 17, 17, uh, very familiar verses, but the Bible says a friend, a friend loveth at all times, easy times, difficult times, it doesn't matter. A friend loveth at all times. And that was the kind of man that Barnabas was. Even when it wasn't easy, Barnabas chose to love Paul and to stand with him. A friend loveth at all times and a brother 
is born for adversity. You know, a friend is consistent. Doesn't matter good days or bad days. A friend loveth at all times. Ups or downs, a friend loveth at all times. So we find that. Proverbs 18 says this. It says, A man that hath friends now must show himself friendly. And there's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Now, some people don't have friends because they are what I would deem or say unapproachable. It's just very difficult to get close to them. And so if we want to be a friend, a friend loveth at all times. And then a friend is approachable. A friend is one that shows himself friendly. Uh, stepping out of our box, stepping out of our comfort zone, stepping out of easy street, and we are approachable. We show ourselves to be friendly. Uh, Proverbs 27, 17 says this, uh, iron sharpeneth iron. And if you've ever uh, gone into the grinding rock, uh, the old time things in the sheds, the men would have uh, the grinding wheel um, um, screwed down to the workbench and all, and you take the lawnmower blade and you put that thing to it, and boy, sparks fly. But those sparks are also producing uh, sharpness, and it's producing an effect on that lawnmower blade. And iron sharpens thing iron. You know, a, a friend is beneficial. Um, are you helping your friends to be more godly, to walk with the Lord, to love Jesus, to fulfill their purpose in their life, to have emptiness filled within their life through meaningful relationships? That's one, one thing uh, we're, we were talking this week about our life groups and getting back to our small group Bible studies and all, uh, because I, I love preaching to you, whether by way of live stream or in person, I, I love preaching to you. There's just something very, very powerful about that small group Bible study of people being able to step into the lives of other people. And so a friend shows himself friendly, and in that inner reaction, they are helping to sharpen one another. Friendship is very beneficial. See, that's what Ecclesiastes taught us in Ecclesiastes 4. It says, two are better than one, why? Because they have a good reward for their labor. There's a great benefit to it. For if they fall, oh my goodness, we don't want to fall. We, we don't want an accident to happen, right? Uh, one will lift up, what, well, who? One will lift up his fellow. But woe to him, this is so, so, so sad. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth for he hath not another to help him up. So the, the benefits of friendship, the, the joys of friendship, all through it. You remember David and Jonathan in the Bible? Uh, part of their relationship and passages have been sadly misconstrued. But, uh, you know, David and Jonathan had just a tremendous, tremendous uh, friendship. In 1 Samuel 18, 1 Samuel 18, verse 1, And it came to pass, when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul, that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him, as his own soul. And so you're seeing that there's a, a depth and a strength when it comes to friendships of us stepping beyond ourselves and stepping into the life of another one. Um, Elijah. I think of Elijah with Elisha. Now Elijah with a J was the first one. Uh, he was the, the mentor to Elisha. And it says in 2 Kings 2 verse 2, And Elijah said, Elijah with a J said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And you know how the story goes, that he went from place to place, and he always told Elisha to stay there. But Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, and this is such beautiful words, I will not leave thee. And isn't that the word of a friend? Didn't we talk about a friend loveth at all times? He says, I will not leave thee. To the very end, Elisha was going to stick with Elijah. And then Aquila and Priscilla. You know, this husband-wife team were absolutely amazing when it came to the Apostle Paul. And sometimes we look at the, the Apostle Paul, or we look at the preacher, and we're like, okay, boy, they are so important. The older, I, the older I get, I'm very grateful to be the preacher, but I have come to realize it is so many people that uh, I have the joy of working with and laboring with that help Newton and uh, ministry all over the world be what it is. Uh, it is it's such faithful people that labor uh, some in front of people, some behind the scenes. And this, this couple were so dear to Paul and helped him in numerous places to be able to get the gospel advanced. He said this in Romans in chapter 16, verse 4. Who, talking about this couple, who have for my life laid down their own necks. Whoa, what an expression. They're willing to give their life for the cause of Christ and for the apostle Paul unto whom not only I give thanks, he says, I'm not only thankful for this couple, they, they risk it all for us. Not only do I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Uh, what an accolade, what, what uh, just an exhortation there for this couple of how important they were. They were so dear to the preacher's heart. Uh, Paul talked about another man. His name's a little bit different, 
But he said, The Lord, in 2 Timothy chapter 1, Give mercy unto the house of Onesiphorus, for he oft refreshed me. And I just stopped right there in my study, and I'm like, Lord, thank you for those that oft refresh me. And that, what that's saying in the King James is, man, they, they, they all the time were encouraging him. All the time were encouraging him. And uh, are you a friend like that? Am I a friend like that? Are we often encouraging people? And I gave you these verses because these help to put some depth into the kind of man that Barnabas was. See, remember this. In verse 26, as we go back to Acts, it says, uh, When Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. And so what was one of the things that hindered them from having close fellowship with the apostle Paul? Well, they were full of fear. Paul, Paul had hunted them down like animals. Okay, Paul, Paul had not been very nice to them. And Paul brought fear to them, and so they were afraid. They were afraid uh, to get close to Paul. They were afraid to give Paul an opportunity within their lives. And then they were skeptical. Uh, in my notes, I wrote this down. Uh, was this, this an, an elaborate trick uh, to hurt them? Uh, some people that we try to witness to or talk to in foreign lands that are deeply oppressed. And there's a great penalty uh, for standing for uh, Jesus Christ and uh, ostrac uh, being ostracized by their family, oppressed by the government. Their lives are even in danger. So sometimes when you try to establish a relationship with them, you may find that they're very skeptical because they're thinking, "Is are, are you laying out a plan, a trap to get me? And so they were, they were afraid, they were skeptical, suspicious. You know, hey, did Paul really get converted? I mean, did he really get born again? I mean, is he really real? And maybe we've asked these same questions about other people. We were afraid of them, skeptical of them, suspicious of them, full of questions, full of questions. Why did he call himself an apostle? What, what, what does this derivation mean that he would say he's an apostle of Jesus Christ? And so they didn't want to be around him. Uh, they, they didn't want to get around him. They, they didn't want to hang around him. They didn't want to get close to him. But verse 27, the first two words, it, he, here comes our hero, the, my hero, forgive me, my hero. It says, but Barnabas. Now, all of them are responding one way, but now Barnabas is choosing to respond another way. But Barnabas listened closely to the wording, but Barnabas took him <clears throat> and brought him. So obviously they had sent him away. And so Barnabas goes to him, took him, brought him to the apostles and then declared unto them very strong wording there he is very passionate about this and declared unto them how he had seen the lord in the way of how he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at damascus in the name of jesus then verse 28 and he was with them now because barnabas stood up for him paul is with them coming in and going out at jerusalem and so if i could just take about 10 minutes and give you some principles of being an encouragement through friendship like Barnabas was. As I went through this thing, just some basic things, ready? One, if you're gonna be a friend that encourages, if I'm gonna be a friend that encourages, their past does not influence your friendship. Okay, in this relationship, uh, Paul's a murderer. Uh, Paul's going after him. Paul has a lot of knocks against him, but yet Barnabas goes to him, stands for him, stands with him, and doesn't mind being identified with him. See, a true friend, if I'm gonna be a friend that encourages, I'm not looking to your past. I want to look to your future. And that's what Barnabas did. Number two, if I'm going to be a friend that encourages uh, their opponents, do not influence your friendship. Okay. So many times our friendships can be influenced by what everybody else says. We are in a time in America where you and I are more inundated by what everybody else says than possibly any time before in our lives. We, from every issue, every decision, uh, every occurrence, circumstance, we are, we are inundated by what everybody else says. Now, everybody's gonna come to Barnabas and say, Barnabas, what, what in the world are you doing, Barnabas? What in the world are you doing bringing this murderer? What in the world are you doing standing with him? What in the world are you doing? But Barnabas chose to be a friend that encourages in spite of what all the opponents were saying. And there may be a time that somebody's gotta stand for you, that the opponents, well, they're against you. And the words are, are, are to you. And you're going to have somebody that will stand for you and encourage you and say, you know what? It's just not true. You know, in friendship, if you hear something about your friend, 
You know, love thinketh no evil. And it's not a matter that we hastily and rashly jump on the bandwagon of, of gossip or rumors or statements. You know, you, uh, you, you, you got to compare all of that to the character of the person that's being talked about in many times. And I'm no hero, goodness gravy, I'm no hero. But there have been many times that someone will say something about someone I know and I'll just have to stop them and lovingly say, what you're saying, it does not match up with the character of the individual that I know. You've got to be willing to stand up even against their opponents. So if you're going to be a friend that encourages, uh, their opponents do not influence your friendship. Uh, number three, if you're going to be a friend that encourages, just a thought here, you must be willing to take the first step. Okay? We want everybody to come to us and cater to us, and, and that's just human nature, right? In this story, did Paul go to Barnabas first or did Barnabas go to Paul? And Barnabas finds out that Paul has been driven away, not accepted, and you know what? Barnabas goes to Paul, took him, brought him back to the disciples, and stands up for him. You gotta be willing, if you're gonna be a friend that encourages, could I encourage you to take the first step? If we, you and I are always gonna wait on the other person, we're liable to be waiting for quite a while. A friend is gonna have friends because he shows himself friendly. Um, at a point in place that sometimes I absolutely despise these cell phones. Oh my word, I, sometimes I'm like, ah, you just wanna throw them away, right? At other times, I gotta be very honest with you. Um, they are such a tool to be able to reach out, to text, sometimes uh, not having the, the time to call and spend time on a conversation, but you want somebody to know that you're thinking about them and praying for them. Um, this morning, just a, a gentleman in our church going through just um, not, 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 not just a challenge in time uh, with a family member and just to be able to reach out and let them know, you know what, buddy? Praying for you this morning, praying for you this morning. And so be willing to take the first step. If you're gonna encourage, be willing to take the first step. And then number four on my notes, if you're gonna be a friend that encourages, if you're gonna be a friend that encourages, you must be willing to stand up for the other person. Sometimes it just seems like you got everybody against you, don't it? Maybe you're going through a time right now where you feel like everybody's against you. Now, Paul, uh, they wanted to kill him. They let him out down by a basket. Uh, he has great skepticism being thrown at him. And so all of a sudden he goes to, let's just say for sake of silly illustration, he goes to the church and says, hey guys, I want to be a part of your church. And they're sitting there going, um, would you like to try the one down the road? <laughs> you know, can we just sort of bump you this direction? And Barnabas like, hey, stop. And it's amazing how Barnabas stands up for him. Um, you, you're going to be a friend that encourages, take the first step. If you're going to be a friend that's uh, going to be an encouragement, uh, be willing to, to stand up for the other person. Barnabas declared unto them, not suggested. I, I, I would like to have been there as Barnabas was speaking to that group that day. Um, he was not passive at all. And I think Barnabas was really an even-tempered, spirited kind of guy. But he declared passionately to them about, about Paul. All right. And so if you're going to be a friend that encourages, you got to take risks. Yeah, it's going to be risky. Um, you've been hurt before, yep. And the likelihoods of you being hurt again uh, are pretty strong. It's, it's working with people regardless of who the people are. Um, I'm reading a book right now that deals with leadership and it, really relationships. Uh, and the first chapter was on being cynical and having people, you know, hurt you or expectations that are unfulfilled and having that callous spirit of becoming cynical. Just a really, really challenging. It was really a challenging chapter. Um, you're going to take risks. If you're going to be a friend that encourages, you're going to take risks. And uh, there's going to be a great possibility uh, that you will not get it reciprocated back to you in the way that you think it should be. Um, there's going to be the possibility of getting hurt. And either you and I can close off and shut down and become hardened and cold, uh, which is a very natural, protective response of our humanness, uh, or we can take a risk. We can stand up from folks. We can understand that we, we, many times we'll be the ones taking the first step, uh, but we want to be a friend that encourages other people, stand up for other people. Barnabas declared unto them about Paul. And then on my notes, number six, if you're going to be a friend that encourages, you must be willing to really get to know the other person. Now, when Paul stood before them, uh, they, they didn't really know him. Now, I'm not saying that Barnabas knew, knew in great detail uh, a lot, because again, this is a new relationship. But the thing that caught my attention was this, how did Barnabas get to know Paul's testimony? 
how did Barnabas know what Barnabas knew about Paul and declared it back to the other guys? Somewhere along the way, there had to be time to listen. There had to be time to find out. There, there had to be time given to this relationship. And you know what? Take the time to really get to know the person. Get past the, the shell and get to the heart of the individual. And I just love this about Barnabas. Uh, he gives back to the guys the testimony of Paul. Uh, I don't know. Did they, did, did they talk at some point in time? I just do not know. Uh, but it's just beautiful the way this man stands up and loves on uh, Paul. Paul is encouraged by Barnabas. Paul became who Paul is because God had put a Barnabas within his life. May you be a Barnabas in the life of somebody else. See, if you're going to be a friend to encourage, um, you open up your circle of friends to hold even more. Um, they could have stuck just to the little group of apostles and disciples. Um, but one of the neat things about being a friend that encourages is your, your circle doesn't remain closed. Uh, your circle grows bigger and bigger. Um, I asked my mom one time. Uh, I was raised in a home that always had just quite a few kids, and my mom and dad are just fantastic folks. Um, and one of the things that just captivated me was the, the love they had for all the kids. And I asked my mom one day, we were sitting at the table, Lexington, and Georgia, um, how can you love all these kids? You know, how can you love all of us? And she looked back, and this won't be verbatim, but it's awful close. She looked back and says, Tony, love does not get used up. Love only grows. You know, I was a kid, and for some reason that statement has really stuck with me uh, through my life and especially through my ministry. And that's Barnabas. Barnabas' love did not get used up because he had more friends. His love only grew because he had more friends. Some people may be threatened if we have more friends, but that's not the Christian life. Our love grows and grows and grows, and that's what Barnabas did. Number eight on my notes, if you're going to be a friend that encourages, you help them with what God has called them to do. Paul had a great calling of God. He, chapter 9, talks about how God has said he's going to carry my name to the Gentiles. He's going to suffer a lot, but I've got a special purpose for Paul's life. And isn't it amazing how this sequence goes, that he tells Ananias that. Ananias touches, touches Paul's eyes through the sequence of events. We're going to kill him. We're going to let him down by a basket. And then we're going to bring this guy into his life named Barnabas, a man that will be very instrumental in Paul doing all the things that Paul did. See, if I'm going to be a friend that encourages, it's not a matter that I'm going to preach messages to you. But with my life combined with your life, I want to be able to help you fulfill the purpose that God has for you. What does God want you to do? And who is in your life that can help you to accomplish that? Some people make enemies, one man said. Some people make enemies instead of friends because it's less trouble. I'm going to read that one more time because to me it was just a staggering thought. Some people make enemies instead of friends because it's less trouble. See, to have friends and to be a friend that's encouraging, uh, it's going to cost you. It's going to deplete you and drain you at times. Um, but see, that's where Paul said this. I wonder if Paul learned this from Barnabas. I will very gladly spend and be spent for you. The more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. I've always wondered when God used Paul to write out the qualifications there of, of the leaders in the church, when he said this, lover, a lover of good men. I've always wondered when those words were being written, if maybe the face of Barnabas came into mind. A British publication once offered a prize for the best definition of a friend. Uh, I read this years and years ago. Among the thousands of answers received were some of the following. Ready? The definition of a friend. One who multiplies joys, divides grief, and whose honesty is invaluable. Mm, okay, that's pretty, pretty strong. Amen. Uh, the, another definition. One who understands our silence. That's pretty strong. One man said, a, a volume of sympathy bound in cloth. Pretty profound. Another said, a watch that beats true for all time and never runs down. And again, all of these are just really, really good. But the winning definition, and you've probably heard this before, the winning definition was this. A friend is one who comes in when the world has gone out. That's very powerful. See, a friend is one that comes in when the world has gone out. And when everybody left Paul, who was the man that came in to his life? 
There you go. His name is Barnabas, and he was such an encouragement through his friendship. And may God help you, and may God help me to be an encouragement through friendship this week. I love you so much. If there's any way that uh, me or our church might be able to help you in taking your next step of growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, maybe there's a possibility that you don't have the assurance that heaven is where you're going to spend your eternity. Maybe you've tuned in today, not really knowing why, but there's an, there's an emptiness in your heart. And you're like, preacher, I, I want to know for sure that when I die, that heaven's my home. I, God's messing and moving in my heart and in my life. Uh, preacher, what do I do? Well, there on your screen will be a connection card. And you can take that and fill it out. And as you fill that out, it'll be sent to us. And you can uh, rest assured that by the grace of God, me or one of the staff will get in touch with you to help you take your next step because the most important decision that you'll ever make is what you do with Jesus Christ. If you are a Christian, now today maybe you'd make a decision. I will be a true friend. I'll be a friend that encourages, lifts up, and strengthens other people. I will be the one that comes in when everybody else goes out. That is Barnabas. Would you pray with me, Father? We love you. I pray that you'd bless and move and work and help us, God. Help us to have strength and grace to be the kind of friend that encourages. Help us to take these lessons from the life of a man named Barnabas and apply them to our lives. Lord, we take a moment and we thank you for those who are a Barnabas in our life. We thank you, Lord, right now for them. And we pray, God, your blessings on their life. Strengthen, encourage, and use God's people. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning as we lift up the name above every name, the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll see you then. I want to be a friend like that. I want to be a friend that God can use to help people for His glory. If this message was an encouragement to you, would you take a minute, share it, send an email, let somebody know about this message. It is a fantastic way to help people find hope in Jesus Christ. God can use you to do that. Now, if there's any way that we can be a blessing to you, we can help you answer your questions or pray for you. Like Pastor Tony said, fill out the connection card and that's the best way to get in touch with us. Now, until next time, may God bless you and continue to work in your life.